Dr. C currently serves as the, on the American Red Cross Board of Directors and several other professional organizations. Throughout his career, Dr. C has earned leadership awards, but he's also most appreciative of the ones that directly benefit teachers and children, such as the Appreciation Award from the Boys and Girls Club, the Appreciation Award from the American Association of School Personnel Administrators for creating an outstanding mentor teaching program, and an Adult Achiever Award for being an outstanding role model. Dr. Cunningham has dedicated his career to supporting and improving the lives of not just children in the schools, but of the communities that surround their lives. His overwhelming passion for the success of students from all backgrounds has guided his path as an educator and community leader. Dr. Cunningham is a man of commitment, honor, and dedication to the old school philosophy that it takes a village to raise a child, and his personal mantra that all roads lead to student achievement. And the best of all, he's a Richard Bland statesman. Welcome to the stage, Dr. C. opportunity to share my story with you. The dedication and commitment this administration has for education is inspiring. I would also like to thank, and I, you know, Coach Chan Pritchard for opening the door of the college to me and Danny for inviting me to participate today and for all the work they do to help you to dream big and reach higher. Don't go around saying the world owes you a living. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. Don't go around saying the world owes you a living. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. You know, the great communicator is Mark Twain. And you know, I love Mark Twain. And he has all these little Twainisms that he would always go around saying. And this is one that guides my, that guides me. Because I had to learn that education is a game changer. It's transformative. It plants seeds for exploration and innovation. I started my journey to, as you know, here at Richard Bland College. And without the foundation I received here, I would not have progressed to becoming Dr. C. The programs here at RBC are still designed to encourage and propel every graduate into the 21st century with the same foundation of success. You just have to want it. You just have to want it. As President Obama has said many times, if we want America to lead in the 21st century, nothing is more important than giving everyone the best education possible. Something I am extremely grateful for is the commitment of the academic department to its athletes. By instilling in athletes, that their academics were just as valuable as playing on the team. It actually allowed me the opportunity to leave RBC and go on and play basketball at a little known university called Liberty on a full scholarship, none of which would have been possible without the undying encouragement and support of both my coaches and advisors here at Richard Blaine. I consider myself to be a preacher of positivity. You see, if it had not been for this college, only God knows where I would be. I believe deeply in what Richard Bland stands for because in my heart, it pulled me up from poverty and it changed the destiny of my family in just one generation. You see, I'm a first generation college graduate as I'm sure many of you are or will be yourself. You know, as you know, I was born in Los Angeles, California and my father was a two-tour Vietnam vet he actually won the Bronze Star. My mother was a homemaker. Neither of my parents graduated from high school. My parents grew up in Birmingham, Alabama during a historically tough era when not all Americans were given the same educational opportunities. Consequently, college was not an option for them. The course of my life changed when my parents divorced and we moved to a place called Bermuda Run Apartments located in Chesterfield, Virginia. 
Bermuda Rum was not a nice place. This was an environment that was being ravaged by drugs, crimes, uh, you know, a common formula that often denies children the open door to success. I grew up watching my friends become drug addicts, criminals, drug dealers, and they would cycle through year after year. As many of you know, growing up like this only makes, it makes you actually grow up a lot faster. I wanted out of Bermuda Run, I can tell you that. The county jail was not for me and I rejected the narrative that you know, my destiny was to become a drug dealer, wear an orange jumpsuit, or end up dead before the age of 21. However, when you seek a road that leads you out of an environment like Bermuda Run, you realize many of these roads lead to dead ends. It, becomes, it became clear to me that the only legitimate road out was education, and so obtaining my education became my focus. I admit, it wasn't all, always easy. There were distractions and enticements all around me. Those minding the dead end roads will work hard to lure you with assurances of quick power and riches. I learned early that I needed to have a foundation in something that could keep me focused and avoid being snared by the imitations of success. I wanted to get the real thing. Fortunately, you know, I had that little round ball and a job at a place called U-Crops. You probably don't even know about U-Crops now. How many of you know about U-Crops? There you go. Well, I had a job in U-Crops. I was a bag boy. And I could bag them groceries. So if I wasn't at school, I was at practice. When I wasn't in, in school or playing basketball, I was working. So if you don't keep yourself busy today, someone with unscrupulous intentions will get, gladly help you find a way to keep busy. I learned that I had to wear these blinders. I learned that I needed a pair of blinders. And these blinders kept me from being distracted because everything around me shrieked. Eric, you will not make it. All I saw, read, and proclaimed always reminded me that you're not meant to succeed. Wear orange. I remember when I was cut from the basketball team in my sophomore year in high school. I graduated from Thomas Dale. You know, I was lost. And when I went home to ask my mother to intervene on my behalf because I believed I was done wrong, as many of us do, you know, all my mother would tell me, all my mother told me that day, she said, son, let me tell you something. There's only three things I can give you, boy. I said, well, that's not food, clothing, and shut. The rest is up to you. So if it wasn't for some amazing teachers at Thomas Dale High School who pulled me to the side and they said, Eric, you need to set high expectations for yourself and you need to learn to dare to be different. And they, they told me, they challenged me not to settle for the status quo, just come to school, stay out of trouble. They set higher expectations, but they also made me set higher expectations for myself. So through hard work and the grace of God, and with the help of some amazing teachers, I graduated from high school. But guess what? I was ineligible to play basketball. I had some offers, but I was ineligible to play because I had a low GPA, and I couldn't make the SAT cut sort. So they labeled me Prop 48. However, I was stubborn. I was stubborn. And I was not going to settle with just graduating from high school. I wanted out. So I refused to accept those stats that they labeled me. And I, it became, you know, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to dare to be different. So without much help, I looked at colleges myself. I knew I could play basketball. I was all district, all region, I led the area. So I knew I could play basketball. And I heard about this school called Richard Bland College. So I jumped into my 1972 Ford Galaxy 500 <laughs> and rode up to Richard Bland College. And I knocked on the door. Right in the same office today, I still see it. And open the door comes Cham Pritchett. And I say, Coach. My name is Eric Cunningham. He said, I know who you are. And I said, Coach, I would like to play for you. 
Well, go on over there and fill out an application for admissions at uh, financial aid and come back and see me. So I scurry on over there and I do it. Got accepted. Financial aid came through. And I was reborn. I was reborn. I felt I was given a second chance. So back in those days, guys, we only had six players. See, we didn't have all this. Actually, this room was more like a storage where we would sneak in here and play in like a band. But we only had six players. We won a few games, but we lost a whole lot more. <laughs> but I knew, I knew that if I listened and I trained and I believed in myself, I would reach my dream of playing D1 basketball. The two years I was here, there were, you know, there were many who doubted my ability. There were many times I felt I, I couldn't do it. Those were the times I wanted to just get out and go get a county job. The, but the stubbornness in me kept me going. I was determined to beat the odds. I was determined not to go back. See, going back would only prove the naysayers were right. You know those guys. I told you so. The professors here worked hard to teach me the basics. I remember fondly meeting with my academic advisors at Liberty University. And he said to me, Eric, RBC has, high, has a high academic reputation. Guess what? You don't need to take any remedial classes. You're ready to enter into your major. And th that meant I was a junior coming straight in. I'm ready for my major. So I want you to think about this. I was Prop 48. I have my associate's degree. I'm playing D1 basketball, and I do not have to take any remedial classes. I'm legit. I'm legit. And all of this happened in two years. All of this happened in two years. So I continued to wear my blinders. I continued to stay focused. And I went on to graduate from, from LU and continue my studies at the University of Virginia, where, as you know, I finished my doctorate in 2006. But as you know, that at each level, the doubt will always creep in again. You don't belong here at LU. You don't belong here at UVA. I didn't deserve this opportunity. I wasn't smart enough for a graduate degree. I realize now that these doubts are always going to be there. You have to be strong enough to push them, to push them down. You have to be strong enough to ignore them. So here I am today, working, as you know, and speaking at my alma mater as living proof that education is a silver bullet. However, it's not the end of my story or my legacy because I'm just so proud of what RBC has done for me. I have two daughters. One is 19, and the other 17. They are now second generation Cunninghams going off to college. That is proof of the hard work, um, and as a result of the efforts. And I'm, I'm just so proud, because I know where I come from, and I know where I am today. See, now when I talk to my daughters, they assume they're going to college. My daughter's now playing volleyball at a school called East Stroudsburg State University. And my youngest daughter is now going off to school, and she aspires to go straight to University of Virginia. Uh, you know, and it's not even a second thought, because I did it. I did it. They are doing it. It's not even a second thought. Their outlook on life is fundamentally different. They see no obstacles in their way. They fear no barriers. In just one generation, we've been able to change our family's destiny. This is the real power of education. So I share these thoughts with you for three quick reasons. First, I believe in the mission of Richard Bland College to prepare students for university tra transfer through academically rigorous programs. They firmly believe that it is their duty to make you reach higher. The second reason I share with you is because I believe in my heart that if I can accomplish what I've accomplished, 
you certainly can. I am no different than you are. I was in your shoes and I know your struggle. I know that you must overcome. I know what you must overcome and I am here to tell you that with a lot of hard work, courage, high expectation, a healthy disrespect for the impossible, and some love, and you wearing those blinders I told you about, you can accomplish anything. And the third and final thought I'd like to share with you is the thought I wish someone had shared with me, but Chan Pritchett shared these thoughts with me as well, especially when I was your age. You see, I was ashamed of who I was. I was ashamed of my family. I was ashamed of where I came from. I did not share my experiences with people. I felt that if they knew that I was poor, if they knew where I lived, they would assume some negative stereotypes and work against me. But I'm here to tell you that who you are, where you're from, and your perspectives and experiences will be an, an enormous competitive advantage when you make it out and find your way into the world. See, in my 25 years of working, I know my point of view and perspectives comes from my background and experiences, and I have found that they are often unique. There aren't many people who have my point of view. And I work with some smart folks, and I know those smart folks will tell you that I do a great job of keeping them on their toes. So I want you to be proud of who you are, be proud of your experiences, be proud of where you're from, and be proud that you're a statesman. Congratulations and thank you.